And we are live and we are back. Let's go. I'm Corey. One half of the quarter full of Fed podcast. And I am back like I never left with another installment of Wealth Wednesdays. Here on the quarter full of Fed podcast, we discuss health and wealth, finances and fitness, and everything in between. And we want to make sure you save more and say less and keep making better your best. Yes, yes. I'm working. I think that's going to be the intro for these. That's what I was prepping for these intros. All right. For those of y'all who don't know, on the Corner Full of Fed podcast, we always be BS in the beginning with my co-host Jordan, who is not here right now. He is still on paternity leave, but on Wealth Wednesdays, we get straight to the finance information. However, before I get started, y'all, oh, let's see, here I go messing up the streaming. Before I get started, y'all know what y'all need to do. Y'all need to hit that like button on YouTube. Please share and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments on the podcast platforms. Please leave those rate and reviews as well, I'm working on the mic, so I feel like I'm turned up, but that's, I guess it's a good thing. And then um, for my information, I'm sideline underscore Corey. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And then for my co-host, Jordan, you can follow him at Stop Stalling J. That is Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And then his business page is Finally Fit on Instagram and Facebook. And then uh, his website is finallyfit.live. There's so, so much information every time. I still can't remember it. And then all this information is in the show notes on YouTube as far as Jordan's personal training information and my financial coaching information as well. Now, like I said, we get straight to it on Wealth Wednesdays. And y'all can already see about the topic, what we're going to talk about. And I, I thought I had already done a video on this. I didn't do it on Wealth Wednesdays. So I thought I did it on one of the uh, quarter and full effect episodes, which we have over 50. So I was skimming through and I was like, I guess I didn't do this yet. And I must have just talked about it. So I've done some research on this and I saw I did um, a podcast about 250 gay, which must have been household. And I also talked about how millennials need 500 K invested by the time they turn 25. But this time we're going to talk about is 100 K enough. Now, this article is from last year. So slight, slight, slightly behind. Right. Let me go ahead and share the screen real quick. And no. We're not going to CNBC this time, y'all. We're going to Business Insider a little bit more. Is it more reliable, less reliable? And I guess we're getting insider business information. So I wanted to do this because I do have the uh, student loan episode coming up, which will be in a little over two weeks. And why not talk about how millennials, 60% of them, who are making over $100,000 say they're living paycheck to paycheck. Let's see if we can figure out why. And again, for those of you who don't know, if this is your first time listening, whenever I read the names of these people who write the articles, the authors, there's always an issue. Hillary Hoover, H-O-F-F-O-W-E-R, Hoover, Halfer. I don't know. All right. Again, this is September 16th of last year, 2021. A survey in June of last year said 60% of millennials earning over $100,000 said they live in paycheck to paycheck. Some of these millennials are known as Henry's, which stands for high earners, not rich yet. Prefer a comfortable. <laughs> also, too, I never read any of these articles where I get started. And again, this is for entertainment purposes only. Don't sue me. Sue your mama. Go do your own research. This is not investment advice. None of that type of stuff. And fair use. Um, some of these millennials, known as Henrys, prefer a comfortable, comma, expensive lifestyle. One would say, when you're talking about finances, if it's comfortable and expensive, that might be a little oxymoronic. No, in today's economy, 100k is considered middle class in the U.S. And then this is, we'll see if they're talking about household income or individual, you know, single, you know, one person earning this amount of money. My guess though, this is going to be about one. A uh, single person earning this amount of money, not household. Okay, let's see. High earning millennials feel broke. What do you, What do you think? What do y'all think the main reason is they're going to feel broke? Frost scroll. Let me get away. It's probably going to be like student loan debt, right? Like, do you think that's going to be the main reason? Sixty percent of millennials rank racking. My bad, racking in over a hundred k a year. Said they're living paycheck to paycheck. Found a survey this June, as in twenty twenty one, by PY. MNTS, I guess Payments and Lending Club, which analyzed economic data census balance surveys of over, wow, this is 28,000 millennials. That's a lot. Okay. Some of these surveys that we've been doing, it's only like 2,000 
people. So 28,000 is a lot of people. It found that about 54% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So that's all Americans. And nearly 40,000, I'm excuse me, 40% of high earners, those who, those making more than 100K annually, said they live that way. Okay. That means high earning millennials aren't the only ones feeling stressed then. Okay. So this is saying that not just millennials are struggling who make six figures, but just everyone in general, which makes sense because that 2000 people I said survey, I think that's uh 60% or 40% of 60% of people don't have a thousand dollars. So 40% of people I believe do have a thousand dollars cash in the bank for an emergency. The other 60% would need to use a uh, credit card. Um, and then, but they feel that some millennials aren't the only ones feeling stressed then, but they feel that way more than their six figure making peers. So millennials feel more stressed than their peers living on constrained budgets. Uh oh, talking about the budget may therefore have less to do with income and more to do with expenses. The report said, and so I recommend if you have to make me choose between increasing your income or lowering your expenses, I choose the lowering the expenses route. Cause at the end of the day, if you don't have any income is due to your expenses, right? That's probably because of life, lifestyle choices. Here we go. Necessities, debt payments, investments, lifestyle, recommend lifestyle being at the end. Let's see how many things on here aren't debt and aren't needs and investments, right? Many of those millennials are likely Henry's. Again, Henry stands for high earners, not rich yet. Okay, it's just, just the same short for high earner, not rich yet. The acronym was invented in 2003, but has come to characterize a certain group of 30-something six-figure earners who struggle to balance their spending and saving habits. And again, for millennials, that age range, because I'm not 30 yet, but millennials, I believe, is 1981 to 96. It's like, it's like 1980 to 1997, right? Those are like the cutoff years. So the back half millennials are in that, the late 20s range. Henry's typically fall victim to lifestyle creep. Here we go. Keeping up with the Joneses. One, when one increases one standard of living to match a rise in discretionary income. <laughs> Y'all, Jesus. They prefer a comfortable and often expensive lifestyle that leaves them living paycheck to paycheck. See, this, I think this, this is the, the paragraph right here. Two sentences right here. They're saying that millennials are falling victim to lifestyle creep. And that's when you increase your standard of living to match a rise in discretionary income. And again, when it comes to the budget, what I recommend how you prioritize spending your money, necessities, debt payments, investments, lifestyle. Lifestyle is the last thing you're going to put money into or increase if you get an increase in income. You should at least be invest, excuse me, increasing how much you're investing. Again, when we talk about debt payments, working on paying down your debt over here, recommend just initially paying off all your debt, excluding mortgage debt before you even start investing. I don't care about the math here. It's all about the risk, which is what this is about to get into <laughs> and knowing how to manage your money. And then obviously it's saying that they prefer an, a comfortable. What is what does comfortable mean? Sometimes you got to be uncomfortable so you can be comfortable and often an expensive lifestyle that leaves them living paycheck to paycheck. Shout out to the fitness side. Shout out to Jordan. I wish he was here. Uh, there's nothing about fitness that is um, comfortable. If you're working out, I mean, you need to be in like, quote unquote, comfortable gear. But lifting weights, you know, you know, if you're doing it right, it's going to hurt. It's not going to be comfortable. All right. So there's that. A hundred thousand dollars salary isn't what it was. I think the six figure number, by the way, was something. I think maybe the 80s, I think the 90s at the latest. That was more of like, look at this ad. This ad is crazy. Like, what's going on? But I think that was more of an 80s, 90s thing, right? And we're 40, 30 years past the 80s and 90s. So obviously $100,000 is not what it was. If I can find an inflation calculator real quick. And let's see. Let's do, I'll do 1990 and I'll do 19, um, I'll do 1980 and 1990. So 100 <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'll share this tab instead of doing it. There we go, y'all. So just so you can see these calculators, right? Right. If we do this right, hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty two is a hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty two. But then if we do nineteen eighty, it would be three hundred and sixty one three hundred and sixty one thousand dollars or nineteen ninety, it's gonna be two hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars, which is about my numbers when I talk about how much money you need to make, and that's roughly speaking, however much your house right cost as far as the value of it when you got it that's about where you need to be so anywhere from two hundred twenty thousand dollars to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars is roughly what that inf inflation calculator is showing this uh this this how do i get this to go away yeah let's stop that 
I was like, what's happening? All right. As the report said, living paycheck to paycheck sometimes carries connotations of barely scraping by and of poverty. It's definitely barely scraping by. OK, it's not poverty, though. The reality of a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle in the United States today is much more complex. And the current economic environment has made it even more complicated. Eh, I would not say it's more complex and it's more complicated. I, people just have too much debt. And as I said, people want to choose per this article, they're choosing that comfortable and often expensive lifestyle. It's different than just choosing to be whatever comfortable means financially. But you can't choose expensive, right? Expensive is relative to how much you make. Okay, you get to a point where you can make enough money where it's hard to actually purchase something that is expensive, right? For millionaires and billionaires, right? When they buy a $100,000 car, if you're a billionaire, that's not expensive to them, right? It's all about percentages or ratios here. So it's really not that complicated. It's excited. The example of a college educated 35 year old earning more than 100,000 with juggling a mortgage student loan debt and <laughs> Jesus it's cited mortgage student loan debt and a child, which could leave them with little savings for big purchases or unexpected emergencies. So I'm confused if you if you already have a mortgage, what what what's the what is it? This is this is OK, who is it, Hillary? All right, Hillary, you wrote this. What else? OK, if you already have a mortgage and you already have a child and you already have student loan debt, what's the other big purchase? A car? I assume you already have a vehicle Now, unexpected emergencies. Cool. Right. But um, when it comes to a finance situation, you do proper, you know, planning, budgeting of your finances. You kind of know what things are going to pop up. Right. You might not know exactly when, but, you know, you're going to need maintenance and things like that outside of medical issues. Right. Which would be the only thing unexpected. Right. Because you don't you don't plan to have significant medical issues. Be sure to be in your physicals and things like that or addressing whatever medical issues you do have when you go to the doctor. Right. They're not unexpected. But, you know, if you come down with something like cancer or something like that, obviously that's unexpected, depending on your health choices. But my goodness, they're saying, yeah, you make six figures. You got student loan debt, mortgage and a kid. However, your penny pension because you have little savings for big purchases. What big purchases if you got a house? This is the stuff I'd be talking about. Y'all just be making stuff up. The generation is facing an affordability crisis. Income increases simply have not kept up with an exponential increase in living costs. Yeah, if y'all saw that inflation calculator, it was saying anywhere from 120, uh, 127% for 1990 uh, to now, and then um, 261%. Uh, from 1980s to now. So obviously incomes, they have not gone up that much. Um, yep. So they have to keep up with inflation or right, cost of living. And then I also want to do this article now too, because cost of living, when this article came out, inflation was not going crazy a year ago. It was starting to peak, but not like what it is now. And then as it's saying in the pandemic, right, the panorama hasn't helped matters by throwing job loss and pay cuts into the mix. The cost of education has also more than doubled since the 1990s, right? Leaving right millennials. Right? There we go. Student loan debt. The student debt. Prima Milani, the founder of Stash Wealth, a financial firm that works with Henry's, previously told Insider that 40 percent of her clients has student loans. On average, they owed. Eighty thousand dollars. And see, this is when. You know, I don't know if they have this information. I'm pretty sure they do. See, this is a half baked statement. I don't want to know that the financial firm. See, it's saying the financial firm that works with Henry's. I, I'm pretty sure they don't work with only Henry's, right? Which is high earners, not rich yet, which is a short saying $100,000. But is this saying that 40% of people who earn $100,000 or more have $80,000 of student loan debt? Or is it just saying 40% of her clients? I would like to know how much student loan debt the people who have, you know, six figures or more in income having student loan debt. But by the regardless, though, $80,000 is an egregious amount. That's almost double. It's a little over double with the average student loan. Uh, I think it's around 30K the average person has. And this is saying it's 80,000. That's insane. $80,000. And again, I wish the degrees people had here. This is more, you know, masters and doctorates. So there are a lot of bachelor's degrees in here because you spend it. Oh, we're not. We'll talk about student loans. Later. <laughs> As a byproduct of this increased cost in living, the middle class has been shrinking. Pew Research Center right, defines middle class as people who earning two thirds to twice the median household income, i.e. about forty eight thousand two hundred and forty five in twenty eighteen. The most recent data available found. So they're saying that the middle class is two thirds to twice the median and the median household income. And that's how it's going to be more so on the states you live in, though. Right. So if you live somewhere like Maryland, where the household income is right around ninety thousand uh, dollars. All right, so two thirds of that is going to be sixty, and then twice that, so you're from sixty to one hundred eighty k, roughly speaking. 
All right. And then that means a six figure salary is no longer what it used to be in today's economy. 100K is considered middle class in the US. And they're saying, are you a millennial earning over 100K, which is living paycheck to paycheck? We'd like to hear from you. Okay. Uh, Hillary is telling you to email her if y'all want to let her know uh, that you're living paycheck to paycheck. So, again, a short article. I just want to touch on this sort of to help lead into the, um, the student loan situation. Let me see if I can find where's the, where's the main quote? Boom, right here. At some point in time, there has to be a discussion, which I've been working on discussing on this podcast, but it has to be a discussion about how much it actually costs to live. I mentioned that number. If you really want to know how much you need to make, if you have a more if you have a mortgage, in short, however much your house costs, your gross needs to be around that. I'm just gonna keep it a band, keep it keep keep it a couple hundred thousand bands, right? Because when when you factor in just straight up taxes, regardless, you got W two money or business money, you got write offs, whatever. But when you start factoring in how many things like investing, investing is percentage based. How much you need to invest as a percentage of your income, and that number ranges between what you see or go by, but anywhere from ten to twenty five percent of your gross. So in short, at most, you're going to be able to live off a of ninety percent if you take a ten percent route. You got 90 percent, then 90 percent of that money of your gross, then that's got to be taxed. And if you in those higher income tax brackets, 22, 24, 32, 35, 37, it's going to be, let's just say, 25 percent of your income is gone. So 25 plus 10 is 35 percent. So you can live off of 65 percent of your gross. So we take one hundred thousand dollars and say you're living off of 65 percent, especially if you're single. By the way, remember, single people got a higher tax bracket. If you're single, you make 100K, you're automatically in the 24 percent tax bracket. And that's just federal taxes. Then you got state taxes as well, depending on which state you live in. It's a little under, I think, 10 states. And if you live in like Florida, Texas, they don't have state income taxes. But if you're one of these states that also have state income tax, if you live in Cali, New York, that 100K is going to vanish. And so really, and that's what a lot of people say, if you make 100K a year gross, you're really only living off of, depending on how much your taxes are and how much you're contributing for your pre-tax benefits, like your health insurance. And your 401k, you don't contribute. I guess you are contributing to your health insurance. But any type of pre-tax deductions you have, you're really living off of anywhere from you know roughly six to uh, sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year, right? Anywhere from around that six thousand dollars mark a month, right, give or take. So it's seventy-two thousand dollars a year, which is not that much money when you factor in necessities, debt payments, invest and investments, right? Then you try to add in a lifestyle and we talk about, yes, inflation is crazy high, but some of the markers that people go by. So if you just think about if 10% you need to invest right of your gross, and then you're roughly paying, let's just say another 25% or so in total taxes, that's 35%. Then if we look at what people recommend you get for your mortgage, no more than 25% from the bank standpoint of your gross, for your mortgage payment, well, that's 25% plus 25%, which is 50% plus 10%. That's 60%. And all you've done is invest, pay taxes slash pre-tax contributions and their deductions. And you got a mortgage or have somewhere to live. You didn't pay for no utilities. You didn't eat anything like that. Then you have to service your student loan debt payments, your car debt payments, your credit cards, any medical debt, any other personal loans that you have. And then you want to have a lifestyle with that. That's going to be hard to do with less than... 50% of your gross, because mind you, you only spend your net. So if we got all these things, right, if you got, if you got, if you're living off of 40% of your gross to take care of everything, essentially, but a house and investments, that's going to be kind of hard. And it makes sense why, right, credit card debt is so high and people want student loan forgiveness, et cetera, et cetera. So um, when, you got to get on a budget. I, I highly recommend you get on a budget. Let's see, let's turn down. I highly recommend you get on a budget. This is the best thing. Um, don't do lifestyle creep. That's why I do necessities, debt payments, investments, lifestyle. Um, a lot of the issue is that your necessities, because it talked about people not having enough money for savings. Is that what came out here? Where is that at? There we go. Is it right there in my face? There we go. Right. So a 35 year old, you got the and that's the saying you already have the mortgage, student loan debt, the child. Right. That's what it's saying. And it's hard to build savings or big purchases. And this is why it's like, you know, shout out Dave Ramsey, baby stuff. We got to have some type of order slash priorities in your financial goals. And it's like if you're in a situation where you don't have a mortgage slash a kid yet. Right. You might already have student loan debt. Right. Shout out to millennials. But if you're in a situation where you don't have a house and or a child, you got to lock in, at least build up your savings. Like, again, 
buy a house without an emergency fund if you want to. But there are some things where shout to shame, bring shame back. We got to start flaming people up. We're like, yo, you ain't, you got, you had a kid <laughs> and student loan debt and no house and no emergency fund. You saved up your down payment about a house, but now you got a mortgage, all this debt and a kid, and you have no money saved. Now nah, you got to hold, you got to hold that L. You got to hold some, you got to hold some type of L. I mean, my goodness, like we can't just let. We can't let right but people just want to do whatever they want when it comes to a financial standpoint and at some point in time there has to be recognition and admission of you making bad financial decisions right because if you're at a point now where you're saying i don't like my financial situation then you need to admit what got you here some things are in your control some things aren't in your control most of the things are in your control though especially when it comes to your finances and there's a good chance that you don't want to break the habits that put you in the situation that you are currently in all right y'all so shout, shout out to millennials struggling financially is 100k a year enough um obviously adjusted for where you live at um i, I think minimum where i said how much you know your your mortgages if you have a mortgage but i think personally if you are uh single right it's just you taking care of yourself you need to make um you need to make at least the uh, median household income of at least the state you live in, because there are a lot of different cities, right? So let's just do the states in DC. But roughly speaking, that's anywhere from I think what's Mississippi's Mississippi's household income is probably in that thirty thousand range. Oh, for twenty twenty one, it looks like it's saying fifty thousand. Is it fifty thousand? Hear my old ass keyboard typing hard as hell. Let me see household income by state. Let me just share this. I'm gonna share this again. See, see, I don't think I'd be making stuff up when I get all these numbers. It should be anywhere from like forty five thousand to um ninety thousand. There you go. District of Columbia says Maryland is in ninety eighty seven, and then which state is the lowest though? Show me the lowest. All right, Mississippi. Mississippi's at 46, Alabama 52, Louisiana 50. Yeah, so anyone, let's say 45 to 90 thousand dollars, roughly speaking, right? You so whatever state state that is, that's how much you need to make. Obviously, you can you know break it down to if you live in a particular area, right? Because where I live at, the mean household income is more than 87 thousand dollars in Maryland. So if you want to look at your particular area, but you need to make at least that whatever your household income is for your state, you got to make at least that. If you're single, by the way, if you're single and you have no debt, so it's just you. And I mean, no debt at all. No debt at all. You want to start getting to a mortgage, things like that. Mm, no, but you, you got to at least make that. So if you live in a mailing, you got to make at least 90K if you're single. Gross, by the way, gross. If you want to talk about having a family, things like that, it sort of gets to roughly doubling that amount, right? Because if you're taking care of you and your other person, right? if, if I'm telling all the single people, to make at least right one times the household income. That means when you get married now, it's two people now. So your household income should double if y'all both making one one times the household income. If in Maryland each person needs to make ninety k, when you get married, if y'all each making ninety k, your household income is one hundred eighty k. So for two people slash a family, it gets roughly in that double range. And then where relatively where you want to live at, things like that, you know, you can adjust that. Then when we talk about having debt, which most people have, you want to add in car payments. In perpetuity, you add in them student loans, all that type of stuff. Oh no, in Maryland, go in Maryland, go ahead and have student loan debt, car loan debt, and credit cards, and want to start a family and have a mortgage and make less than a quarter million. You don't live in Anne Arundel, Howard, Moco, PG. You don't live in none of the counties that we consider quote unquote the DMV area. Shout out to Anne Arundel County, DMV. You don't live in none of them areas. You live in you shout out to Jordan. You live in where Jordan and Aberdeen. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you live you living out there. So um yeah, I would uh I mean, you can make it on less than $100,000. It's just the lifestyle you're going to be able to live is going to be a lot lower and that's because the lifestyle that you want to live costs more money than what you make. And that's the acceptance that uh people don't don't want to have. But all right y'all, that's it. Again, remember you see if you've been listening this whole time because the, the likes don't match the views. But if you've been listening this whole time, please hit that like button just real quick or leave a comment. Shout out to somebody left a comment on the last video on the Deion Sanders video. I'm trying to do more uh, 
like hot topic stuff, right? When that's finance related, but like Deion Sanders was a hot topic last week. This week, the hot topic is the Brittany Grind situation. However, I can't talk about that type of stuff because you know I, I don't want to put my job at risk. But <laughs> but um, yeah. So the student loan information will be coming up a couple of weeks. Again, I'm gonna do a recap of everything for um this uh going to next year as far as what the irs limits are for the 401k roth ira etc cetera, etc cetera, tax brackets all that type of stuff to get y'all prepared for 2023 then like i said the student loan information will be dropping in a couple weeks as well so all right y'all if you have any questions concerns again i'm silent underscore Corey on twitter instagram and tiktok my co-host jordan who does the fitness section is stop stalling j on twitter instagram and tiktok as well his business page is finally fit instagram and facebook finally fit live for the website and then you can find our information in the show notes as well on YouTube. And my financial coaching information is there as well. But if you have any questions, concerns from Jordan, for myself or Jordan, you can DM us or leave comments on any of the various platforms that I just mentioned. So, all right, y'all, you know how we, we close out. Remember to save more, say less and keep making better your best. And I will catch y'all in the next one.